kanalen. I dag ska vi ta upp något intressant tema. Så jag sätter över till studio. Ja, then I want to invite you to a new program here in Family Channel. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very severe uh, um, case uh, regarding the Norwegian Barnevern, the CPS, the child care system in Norway, well known for all its uh, judgment in the uh, Human Rights Court in Strasbourg. Uh, I sit here with um, Helena Mikkelsen uh, and her friend Oliver, and uh, we are going to tell you a little bit about this case, how it started, uh, how it went on, and the situation today. But um, first I'd like to introduce to you Helena. Uh, she has a, a page on Facebook, and this page shows her together with her daughter. Uh, she is a singer, a vocalist in uh, Imperia, the band Imperia. They uh, are just coming out with a new uh, music uh, long player here. Uh, and uh, she has been fighting for her uh, daughter ever since uh, 2015. And it all started in, as, as was described in the Norwegian media, uh, a, regarding uh, a land dispute uh, about her property where she lived with her daughter at the time, where some neighbors start to make roads and uh, destroy the water supply and uh, the land around her house. And this ended up uh, with these people around her sending worries to the local uh, Barnevern, Child Care uh, Protection Service. And it ended up in, um, in uh, uh, acute taking of her daughter. And she has been gone for the last few years in that system. And uh, Helena has been trying to fight ever since to get her daughter back. And uh, she first went uh, yeah, she have gone through several trials and trying to fight to get back, but the system in Norway and uh, this childcare office uh, in Frulan Kommune uh, is something for itself. It's uh, when you have this kind of dynamics in the societies in Norway, uh, people in power stick together against you and me. That's how it worked. And that's what you see in, in this case where uh, police, uh, court, uh, childcare workers, uh, neighbors, uh, people knowing each other uh, is uh, coming up against Helena and her daughter. And um, just um, this month, uh, second, she was in city court, an appeal from the bo uh, county board uh, to uh, regain her daughter from this uh, foster system. So, uh, Helena, uh, maybe you can explain very short the um, introduction to the case, what, what happened with your land just before it started to be a, a Barnavan case. Yeah, we, uh, me and my daughter lived uh, happy on, on a small farm. We had horses and dogs and cats and many people followed my Facebook because I shared our idyllic uh, uh, life on, on my Facebook. And um, then uh, I was in education, child and youth worker and uh, as a special pedagogic at the university. And uh, uh, I also worked as a teacher at Astra School in Arendal and a lot of other things, kindergarten and, um, well, until uh, Frula Commune gave illegal uh, allowances to build up two houses and, and uh, roads to get to these houses on yeah. the neighbor property. Yeah. Um, and this is the neighbors you talk about. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they choose to do this work themselves to save money instead of hire uh, professional companies for it. So uh, because of that, they digged into on my property uh, and they did uh, sprengning and uh, blow ups in the rocks yeah, yeah. under the ground, wherever they felt like. And they didn't uh, look on how the systems on my land was or yeah. any uh, in front work of 
where not to dig or, or do things. Yeah. And in this way, our drinking water uh, uh, and well got poisoned yeah. and ruined. Yeah. And in this way, my sewage infiltration and system got yeah. ruined. Uh, so basically, my house got on. You couldn't live there anymore. You cannot yeah. live without water and uh, broken sewage. Uh, infiltration. So uh, I and uh, I went to Fruna Commune and asked if they could fix up for what they have done. But there I met locked doors. Yeah. Uh, the neighbors I invited for coffee and asked them, "You want to fix this in a normal, yeah. relaxed way?" They were not interested. So I had no choice yeah. than to uh, uh, go to uh, towards uh, uh, Fruna Commune. Yeah. The official way, which is called Fylkesmannen in Norway, yeah. and towards the neighbors who had done this work that ruined yeah. on my property, I had to go to the Tingrat to yeah. uh, to court yeah. private. And the, in the, the meantime, end, the end of all that was that yeah. you had to go to the authorities with a claim that they have to fix this, uh, and you actually won that case. Yeah, I won the case. Uh, it ended uh, also course of this case, uh, who uh, had a time period of uh, about three years. Mm. Uh, so 2011 to 2014. Uh, I also had to move in between. I moved from Froland to Evie. I moved back from Evie to Froland and a lot of stress. I said economically to pay for two houses and things like that. And of course, Angel yeah. had to change yeah. kindergarten, school, yeah. all these things that follow it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as you said, I won these cases, both of them. Uh, it was on TV news in Norway, uh, the newspapers everywhere. And mm. uh, But Frola commune politicians uh, felt they got a kick in the balls by, by a blonde woman, single mother, student living in the deep forest yeah. alone. Uh, should win over them in their uh, suits and all the money and the suitcases. So they thought now we're going to ruin her life and mm. kidnap her daughter. So the same neighbors who lost in this building case uh, sent false concern messages about me to uh, uh, CPU office of Roland Commune. Yeah. And uh, Roland Commune did their part in this game and yeah. uh, they uh, officially... So so it Legally was kidnapped. My it daughter. was after after that case sort of have have gone on for some years that uh, the worries start to come into the barn around the social protection service for children uh, that uh, sort of a payback. Okay, you yeah, we perfect. lost. Now we're gonna take you, and then they start yeah. to report you to the childcare, uh, yeah. and in. 2013, the child care checked this first time and they found you was a good enough mother yeah. and they cancelled the case. But then mm -hmm. it went on uh, a, a year or two later and that's where when they took your daughter. Yeah, because I moved, then I lived in Evia when in the, in the time of this uh, yeah. investigation, uh, what you talk about. Yeah. And I moved back to Froland. And then they start fully uh, towards me, my animals, my daughter, uh, with harassment and scary behaviors yeah, and yeah, deeds yeah. to uh, uh, try to scare me because they had lost nearly a half million. Yeah. That for include if you include the lawyer costs, they had yeah. to pay for yeah. my lawyer. Yeah. And they didn't want that. And they were many, and yeah. I was one. Yeah. Yeah. So they. The whole place where I lived was only a family of these people. Yeah. So they uh, uh, put themselves together, make a, pl uh, a rotten plan and uh, uh, make concern messages them together, the people yeah. who lost yeah. and, and uh, send in. Plus they uh, shoot with air guns towards my horses. Yeah. Uh, one of them is kicking one of my dogs in the belly. They uh, tell to their children, don't stand with uh, her daughter on the bus waiting place. Yeah, so my yeah. daughter ended to stand waiting alone. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of things yeah. they so, did. But... So uh, after losing the mm -hmm. land cases, yeah. they started to harass you and yeah. your daughter. And yeah. there was, uh, as far as I could see, mobbing at the school. Yeah. Uh, somebody was, as you just said, shooting at your property with um, air, gun, air gun. Uh, yeah. shooting at your horses uh, and other animals. Uh, 
uh, your uh, as I just uh, showed the viewers uh, in the Norwegian newspaper. Uh, this is in Norwegian, but it says uh, mother and daughter living with poisoned water. Mm -hmm. And there was in the um, one of the biggest news uh, station, uh, Norwegian Broadcasting, they had uh, this yeah. case at the time. Uh, yeah. So it was a big case in that small commune, Frulag commune. Yeah. And a lot of people was in danger of losing face, sort of. Yeah. And then you win, and then the payback come with worries to the childcare system. Mm -hmm. And that ended up in they taking your daughter, and uh, I saw from the uh, psychology report um, that looked like sort of fraud <laughs> because yeah. they, uh, a report like that is for um, the court to know how you are as a parent, mm -hmm. uh, your parenting skills, but uh, you were situated in Germany and the psychologist never saw you and your daughter together at all. She only talked to you over telephone mm -hmm. one hour, isn't that right? Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. For one hour talking on the telephone, she made an evaluation of my psychological health. I never met yeah. this person, to yeah. be aware of that. I never yeah. met this person. Yeah. Uh, my uh, uh, husband was witness of this conversation. Mm. I just said I have two dogs and tell a little bit about my dog's story that I own a horse. Yeah. Uh, just normal blah, blah, blah. Uh, like. Yeah. The weather, what is the weather kind of talk? And from yeah. this, she make it uh, uh, that I'm psychologically sick yeah. and that I cannot, uh, I'm not, uh, um, ain't it. I'm, um, uh, you're not capable of uh, capable yeah. Yeah. or suitable yeah. for to yeah. take care of a child. Yeah. Uh, I'm not suitable for to see my child. Yeah. Uh, it, it is. It was completely crazy. Yeah. But the most crazy part here, I think, is that the judge mm. in the courthouse yeah. have accepted this report yeah. made out of nothing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that is uh, pretty serious because we, uh, those who are not familiar with the Norwegian childcare system, uh, I can tell mm -hmm. that uh, only the last couple of years, uh, Norwegian child or Norway have been sentenced in the uh, European Court of Human Rights uh, eight times, and there are about thirty other cases waiting, uh, all connected to childcare. And the last case was uh, just a few days ago uh, in the Grand Chamber uh, regarding Article Nine. That's about religion, but most of the cases Norway have lost is about Article Eight. It's about the family and privacy and this case uh, especially when I see this uh, psychologist who actually write that you are paranoid and a lot of different things uh, without even meeting you while the psychiatrist that you went to to ask something wrong with me she wrote a report that you don't have any diagnosis whatsoever yeah, and, and that's where you see this, what shall we say, uh, the fraud. The, this is pure fraud. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went myself to mm. a, a, a special psychologue because I wanted a serious evaluation because yeah. I knew they were planted the diagnosis on me yeah. in this case yeah. by Fruland Commune standing behind this, yeah. uh, which is the so-called care commune of my daughter now after yeah. they officially uh, kidnapped her from me in 2014, June yeah. 2014. And uh, um, basically, uh, I, I lost my track. I I, I commuted there, Rune. Yeah, but I can get you in again. Uh, okay. You you. How many times have you seen your daughter the last couple of years? Uh, yeah. Uh, first, I want to say something about this uh, uh, special psychologue. Yeah, yeah. I went myself to a special psychologue. She's called Elsa Bach, uh, Bachmann. She is a psychiatrist, right? Yeah. Yeah. Special psychologue, yeah. Uh, yeah, special psychiatrist. Yeah, yeah. And uh, she's the only one mm. in this whole case yeah. who have had a serious evaluation with yeah. all the tests yeah. you need to put a diagnostic yeah. Yeah. or to evaluate a, this, the mental state of a person. Yeah. Yeah. She, after taking these tests, mm. 
and several conversations, me and her physically together, uh, she found nothing. No. She also found nothing on the diagnosis given of uh, uh, of Roland commune uh, yeah. in this CPU case. Yeah. Um, and but this document, they just look away from. Yeah. They don't care. They pretend like it doesn't exist. Yeah. They, they don't pick, even. They just uh, pick and choose what evidence they want to look at. Yeah, and yeah. instead <clears throat> they pay a person. Hmm. They talk with me on the telephone without me physically, yeah. without uh, yeah. having I, tests. I, I could, uh, from the psychology report, uh, mm -hmm. I could see that what uh, this uh, uh, court appointed psychologist was actually doing was looking at how you was fighting to get your daughter back. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on that, said that you are not fit to be a mother. Yes. Actually, you you are a lion, you know. You're fighting for yeah. for your own daughter, and which mother or father yeah. would not fight for the children if they love their children? Yeah. And especially yeah. in my daughter's situation, hmm. where I sit with photo evidences yeah. and record the telephone calls of severe neglect she is exposed yeah. to in the foster home, yeah. of a severe abuse, yeah. of uh, and abuse marks all over her body. Yeah. Yeah. And emotional and, and mental uh, uh, abuse they are doing towards her. That yeah. comes out in, in documents to, to be read there. She tells about herself. Yeah. Which mother or father don't do something about that? Yeah. It's actually your fighting skill when the system tried to take you down that she is evaluating. And that's yeah. why she called you paranoid and different things, because it's actually them that you're fighting but uh, the way you are parenting your daughter that's a totally different uh, mm -hmm. case because uh, if we can see uh, something something uh, same uh, in Norway we have military in mm -hmm. Afghanistan killing mm -hmm. uh, terrorists as we mm -hmm. like to call them and these same soldiers come back to Norway and they are parents so should we evaluate their parenting skills from how many people they kill down there or how they take care of their children? Yeah, exactly. And it's actually the same here. They are evaluating you or blaming you because you're fighting for your daughter mm -hmm. and they don't look at how you are parenting your daughter mm -hmm. because in the report from uh, 2013, everything was okay. Mm -hmm. You was good yeah. enough and they canceled yeah. the case. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have a feeling that this case is going to blow back in their face one day, yeah. Uh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Very hard, and I think it's going to cost them a lot, uh, uh, because my daughter has uh, lost a lot of years of her childhood, yeah. and uh, have uh, uh, what she has been exposed to, what I 400% can document that she has been exposed to, uh, have given her emotional and mental and uh, uh, I think also physically damages, which will of course tra uh, track her down the rest of her life. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the 2nd of uh, February this year, just a few days ago, you were in court, in the city court, uh, the appeal case. Uh, how did you feel the judge, uh, the, did she uh, look impartial or was she favoring the childcare? No, she was all the time favoring the official part. Childcare system. Yeah. Me and my lawyer never got anything we asked for. We asked about that Asakian you should look at when me and my daughter were spending time together physically at the same yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, this was refused. And actually, as you know yourself, this is a right you have yeah, as a yeah, parent. Yeah, yeah. You have the right for this. Some have a and yeah, it's report. Yeah, yeah. But on all the years from 2014, I would never got my right for this report. Yeah. At the same time, there is something called a uh, tillits uh, person in Norwegian that's called in English a trust person that the child yeah. have a right yeah. from the moment it is removed from the, the, their home. Yeah. It has a right to choose themselves a person to keep contact with and talk to, yeah. uh, which is 
not connected with CPU, yeah. uh, CPS, or, yeah. or the foster home. This was never given to my daughter. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the latest years of Charles person, that means that the child is allowed to speak what they want themselves, yeah. is done in, in illegal ways. Yeah. It's done in the CPU office or in the foster home. Yeah. This is supposed to be done away from yeah. CPU workers, well, from the CPU ground. office, yeah. uh, foster parents and the foster home, so yeah. that the child can feel f uh, free to speak. Yeah. Yeah. What they do is they have full control over her and they yeah. keep her to, the, which you will read yourself, my daughter yeah. is afraid of this foster parents. Yeah, yeah. I, and I see, she writes. I, I can see this uh, picture with um, wounds and blue marks and scars yeah. uh, around her body. Uh, yeah. We have a description that uh, they uh, break plates in front of her to yeah. scare her, uh, yeah. lock her up in a room, uh, yeah. lock the door. Uh, I, I was just thinking, if a parent had done that, the child yeah. care system would definitely exactly. come. <laughs> exactly, they would, but yeah. who not? Yeah. With police. Mm. They would come with police, take yeah. out this child. Yeah. What happens when I or somebody else out here yeah. have asked for help from police? Yeah. Oh, they don't help you. The police yeah. put you in a cell and take away ev evidential proof on my phones? Yeah. Of, of child abuse done by the, the foster parents in yeah. under official care. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah. I also, it is really, I also, really terrible. I also register a very other serious thing here that the foster mother went out on Facebook talking about this case and actually criticizing you and uh, what I would say, glamorizing herself. Yeah. And some of her friends Oh, this was a very good foster mother. And then she actually went out and I think that's a breach of confidentiality because she's not allowed to do that. She's actually employed. She paid yeah. by the government hundreds of thousands every year, yeah. Norwich and Krona, yeah. to take care of your daughter. And then she go out and start talking about the case. Mm -hmm. That is definitely not legal. <laughs> so, I don't I, I think. Yeah, her name is Anne-Christine <laughs> Ausland, and yeah. uh, indeed on her former reportage, uh, which was in Norwegian, yeah. uh, which, uh, uh, she started to comment together with a family of her and, and her friends in the yeah. neighborhood in Navistal there, yeah. in, in Arendal. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but I, when I posted the, the photos of abuse they have done to my daughter, they very fast shut it up, as you noticed, yeah. and the comments yeah. were also over. Uh, so, but but it's not allowed, is what you say. They, yeah, it's yeah. toxic yeah? yeah. If you work as a as a foster parent, yeah. uh, you are not allowed to uh, let know that you uh, know this child or, or are taking care of this child or uh, or know the mother or yeah. anything at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, so there are a lot of things here that's not. <laughs> not according to the human rights of either you or your daughter. And, and uh, mm -hmm. I also uh, see that uh, uh, the Grand Chamber in, uh, in um, Euro uh, European Human Rights Court, uh, they have decided that uh, seeing the child uh, three to six times every year is mm -hmm. too little. Yeah. And now that in Norwegian court has been started to race. But how many times the last couple of years have you have visitation with your daughter? Yeah, I saw my daughter the last time, November 2018. So that's three years ago. Three years ago. Yeah. My last telephone call with my daughter yeah. Yeah. was August 2015. So just in that uh, thing, they are breaking the human rights article eight oh, yeah. about family. Severely. 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 For Not a long only time. for me, yeah. but imagine how this feels for my daughter. They also yeah. refused me yeah. to give her gifts for yeah. birthday and, 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 and Christmas. Christmas gift. Yeah. How do you think it feels for, for my daughter yeah. uh, to never hear the mother's voice, yeah. never see the mother, never see that on her birthday uh, there's also a package from mommy yeah. or on christmas there's a package yeah. from mommy yeah. the only thing i can hope for is that she knows yeah. 
Yeah. That is because I'm not allowed and not because I don't want to give. Yeah. I, I have here in in similar cases where the child care have told uh, the child that, oh, your mother don't care about you anymore. There is yes. no present. And mm -hmm. in the office of that particular child care office, mm -hmm. there was a huge bag of Christmas present that was returned. Even letters mother sent yeah. was returned. And then they mm -hmm. manipulated the child into yeah. believing, no, yeah. nobody care about you. You have to stay here. And of course, children yeah. can be manipulated. And yes. that is They do it with my daughter. Not. They make yeah. my daughter believe that your yeah. mother is sick, so you will never come home. Yeah. Your mother is sick, so you better not see her. Yeah, I, I saw that, that in... Uh, I saw that in the psychology report where mm -hmm. uh, the psychologist, I don't know if that's true, because you never know about this, what they write, but she no. wrote that your daughter uh, worried little about meeting you because mother mama is sick but who told her that because it's your, doc you, uh, your doctor uh, uh, yes, said you in know, other sick. documents yeah. she have explained that that yeah. it's barnevernet cpu mm. yeah. workers of rola commune who tells her that and andre steen Arislan and jens wiegland who is the foster parents which yeah. come on our uh, former and since you have a, a paper from a psychiatrist saying there's nothing wrong with you, yeah, they are lying. Yeah, and they, they are, are manipulating and, and yeah. infiltrating and yeah. brainwashing my daughter to believe things about me that is complete lies Absolutely. and that I can yeah. also document yeah. by psychologue that it yeah. is lies. Yeah. And that all, all these small, uh, small things add up to a very serious case. Oh, yeah. It, it, you have corruption. You have mm -hmm. breach of human rights. Yeah. Uh, you have breach of Norwegian law. Yeah. Uh, it's harassment. Yeah. yeah, harassment. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it feels really... Uh, you can imagine yourself if, if somebody would create and make lies about you, that you are yeah. something you are not. And you also prove uh, you are not, yeah. and that this is getting used in in such a case like this, and yeah. that somebody manipulates your child to believe this lie what they yeah. themselves created. Yeah, and and it's, all of this is actually a revenge because you win in court on the land case. Yeah, yeah, and that makes it even worse. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that the. The worst in this whole case that have all together from the building case of been uh, uh, about 10 years. Yeah. Uh, I think the worst case, what has been done here by, by uh, uh, politicians and uh, official employers here, who's, who misuse their power to yeah. do what they've done, yeah. is that they hit on the most vulnerable and, and yeah. helpless person in this yeah. whole case which yeah. was a child yeah yeah and they ruined her mm. she didn't make a choice oh for the anything of yeah. what happened there yeah. and i find this so uh, um i don't have words i find it unhuman yeah. that uh, somebody is able to attack a seven and a half year little girl yeah. And, and really ruin her life completely. Yeah. Take her away from the mother she was happy with and yeah. put her to their own family yeah. and only earn money on her and because, completely ruin her life. Because you, you lived together with your daughter for yeah. eight years. She was eight years when they take her. Was yeah, seven and a half years. Yeah. So, so she had connected to you. She know you. Oh, yeah. uh, and what they then tried to break is mm. definitely a human right violation. Very serious yeah. one. So, so yeah. th this is a very, shall we say, ugly case, sort of. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very, yeah, very yeah. ugly. But we, we are now waiting for the judgment of this city mm -hmm. court uh, that may come in a week or so. Yeah. Uh, and then we can see what, what the court decides. Because if the court not start to process as they are told by the human rights courts to do, to mm -hmm. get your daughter home again, uh, they are violating the Human Rights Treaty. And that means this is going on to the next court, the Supreme Court, and to the mm -hmm. High Court. And if none of them 
uh, are following the human right, then this case ends up in in Strasbourg, in the yeah. European Court of Human Rights. Yeah. Yeah. And in this way, uh, uh, if the the case uh, uh, ends there, I'm I'm hundred percent sure they will find all the breakage, yeah. severe breakage of the human rights in this case and. Uh, what happens when you uh, uh, win the cases there is that you automatically the the newspapers and television news in yeah. Norway get interest in your case. Absolutely. Yeah. And in this way, I can apply it uh, also uh, me and her situation and and yeah. and and uh, uh, case out in the Norwegian media on a wider spectrum in the big newspapers yeah. Yeah. and television. And yeah. I think this is needed here because yeah. uh, as you see in the whole picture, like. Courts, police, yeah. uh, men, all the things is, is corrupted all the way. Yeah. So yeah. It stops everywhere. Yeah. So what you need is a lot of media power. Lots of and, attention. And attention. A lot of attention case. and yeah. bring yeah. it out in the light with its yeah. names yeah. and everything. Because so uh, that's, you, you are now situated in Germany. Yeah. As we speak, because yeah. living here isn't safe for you, actually. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, um, I get harassed by uh, police and, yeah. and uh, uh, family of the foster uh, home. And well, one thing, this uh, psychology that um, on the work for the court uh, made a report about you. Uh, she was actually, uh, her mandate was to see how you were parenting with your daughter. Mm -hmm. And... How much did she see you and your daughter together? Uh, zero. Zero. So uh, she, she actually nothing. just called you and say hello. Yeah. Uh, how is the weather in Germany and blah blah yeah. blah? And yeah. then she wrote a 30 40 page report about you. Uh, and I saw the report, uh, mm -hmm. it was actually about you fighting for your daughter to get back, mm -hmm. and yeah. they used that against you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And from, as I said, from this uh, one hour telephone call, mm. she came with a conclusion uh, of uh, my psycho, I was psychologically uh, not well, completely ignoring the the actual only serious uh, psycholog report in this yeah. case, which is from yeah. Elsie Bachmann, that I have nothing of this diagnosis yeah. And, yeah. and I'm psychologically well. Yeah. To tell the truth yeah. and to document the truth, doesn't make you psychologically sick, does it? Even though no. it happens in under official and, and, and political care. Yeah. You understand? It's yeah. not the only case that yeah. uh, uh, governments or politicians is trying to create a person to be just mental ill or something. If yeah. the person say a truth of crime that happens in under uh, official care, you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, uh, there is other people also in Norway. They they have ended in prisons. They have ended in mental hospitals. Yeah. Been put a false diagnosis on them just to yeah. shut their mouth because yeah. they said too much. Yeah, it's you know? a it's a misuse of power. Actually, yeah, misuse Absolutely. of power. Yeah. yeah, we're supposed to just be like the white sheep, like everybody, and they accept all the. Yeah. what they do uh, and and hush, hush if you know something yeah. or can document because, something. Because uh, you, you told me that the uh, lawyer from this uh, Fruland Kommune mm -hmm. have said in court that uh, if you uh, could uh, not, um, what shall we say, uh, say or argue against the childcare, maybe you can see your daughter uh, one hour every year, right? Yeah, <laughs> it will, yeah. <laughs> But I, I could really slap his face, you know, so it's good I was not there physically and on video because I could really slap his face. Yeah. One hour, one time a year. Yeah. Just, yeah. To, just to silence you. Really? Yeah. It's, 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 uh, they are making a big fool out of themselves. Yeah. There's so many thousands of people who followed my Facebook of our life when my daughter yeah. lived with me. Uh, people who followed and known and seen my daughter in my care since she was a, a baby. And uh, that they all can witness mm. the big change also yeah. before and after yeah. and how severe the, the negative changes yeah. it's been after she was officially kidnapped from me of Hohenheim Commune in, in, in June 2014. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, last word isn't said in this case, I think. No. 
So um, we will look forward to see uh, when the judgment comes from city court, maybe next week, and uh, we can update uh, our followers uh, to see what uh, this judge have decided, because uh, the Human Rights Court also have clear um, uh, lines of how judge, uh, judges in Norway is going to work too, because that was some of the big issues here in this uh, Strandloben case that went up in Grand Chamber a couple of years ago. That one decides how the courts here is also going to work. And if the court here with this judge doesn't follow that, she has an even bigger problem because as in your case, when that went on, uh, you were alone against this uh, mob in that commune, sort of. Mm -hmm. But now this case is out and you're not alone anymore. So now they are in the few and we are in the many. Yeah. The change has come. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know your rights, and they better find out fast because we're probably coming after them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Okay. Any last words? No, that 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 uh, was it. it up. Uh, I, I think then we can do it uh, in English after the. We, we yes, can see what uh, when the court uh, decision come we can mm -hmm. see uh, see how they made that case come out but but i i, I don't know already know how the decision comes yeah yeah because it's, it's, it's yeah. before the, you know, the thing is that for me i see it as a foreigner of course like i'm german so, so if i i watch it uh, it's a bit like a movie actually yeah. The, yeah. this it's a theater, that yeah. you have yeah. it's, uh, for me i watched the whole case yeah. the, the, the it's more like it's like an imitation of a court case. Yeah. And it always says everybody's bought and paid and even call it that way because I yeah. think they get bought and paid with their salary. It is like everybody there except your own lawyers on the same team. Yeah. They're on the same team. You send them alone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the, I call it an imitation of a court case. You don't yeah. ever get the impression that the, the, the judge is uh, trying to get an objective impression or, or, or really figure out what's going on there it, it just follows the papers that that cpu hands in and everybody's kind of speaking over you and yeah. and, and they look away from 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 things one of the most unbelievable things i found that is that there's a doctor document existing that i've i've seen myself that it exists yeah. that that re, where a doctor reports like injuries on her daughter like with, with blue marks under both arms and stuff where you can really say okay this cannot have happened by a playing accident or something no. And that uh, her, her lawyer asked that document in several times, yeah. and that the court refused it with kind of a wishy washy explanation. What did they say that Angel didn't want that? Yeah, they a, use a excuse. Angel nonsense. don't want this doctor report to be given yeah. in. This is they give us an excuse. The the yeah. fact is that it stands in this document. Angel Maria has several blue marks on the both her arms, yeah. and it's done in the foster home. Yeah. So, Anne Christine and Jens, the foster parents in this mm -hmm. case, if you can call them that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, has been abusive to her yeah. physically, and they don't want this document that a doctor has seen the abuse marks under yeah. the arms yeah. of my daughter yeah. uh, uh, be brought to court. Yeah. So, it's just being denied. And also, this, the judge mm -hmm. is accepting. Yeah, how is that possible? I don't understand that. Because I believe it. I say, I personally believe always in the good of men. Like, like I, I think that that's. And of course, I believe in the usefulness of a, of a system like Barnaby and every country yeah. needs something like a child protection service, yeah. of course. But from what I see in Norway, it's like it, it's, it's a system that got mad. Yeah. Like a system well, that got mad. You, like you a, can see that from all the judgments against the Norwegian uh, CPS yeah. system in, yeah. uh, in the Human Rights Court. There they are extremely many uh, compared to other countries. And yeah. I, I think what we are expecting to see here in this adjustment from city court now mm -hmm. is uh, another miscarriage of justice, pure yeah. and simple. Yeah. But I think really, that's what we're going to see. That kind of, uh, it's a completely fade. I don't understand why it, 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 from what I see, there's far too much money involved. It's like a shop yeah. that is always yeah. open. It gives the wrong incentives. It's, also, it's, the amount of money that foster parents insane. get it's yeah. human is completely insane. 
I think it is good, of course, that the uh, foster family gets supported, that they don't, let's say, have an extra financial burden or something, but it shouldn't become a profession because, of course, that sets the wrong incentive, it ex attracts the wrong people. Yeah. Also, uh, we have several cases that it's been pedophiles and stuff who have yeah. got foster uh, children or, uh, yeah, what he says, yeah. that it yeah. attracts the wrong kind of people. Also, like what I believe in my daughter's case, that this is criminal people. Yeah. I have indications out from what my daughter has said and pictures have been sent of my daughter only eight years old, full of lipstick in her face and mm -hmm. red, uh, red lipstick and high heel shoes and everything. Yeah. And be, with bikinis, which yeah. is far too, should not be wear yeah. by so small girl. Absolutely. Uh, I believe that these people in this foster home is criminals and that they also might do child prostitution yeah. in under child welfare services of my child. And I, this... I, I, can just, I can say that uh, just a few days ago, uh, mm -hmm. a policeman was uh, found guilty of uh, pedophile activity. Uh, yeah. We have uh, poli uh, judges uh, yeah. in the same. Uh, we have uh, child care workers said yeah. this, uh, a couple of years ago, 52 yeah. cases was yeah. uh, lined up and that was foster parents. Yeah. Uh, you have doctors uh, yeah. and you have other, shall we say, um, high ranking officials in the Norwegian <laughs> system <laughs> where children yeah. come, uh, kindergarten, schools, uh, they, they, they are exposed pedophiles all over the place, but yeah. uh, they don't want to talk about it and they just hish hish get yeah, out of the way. Yeah, but it's a big business, uh, uh, but it's hidden, it's, mm. it's, it's very well hidden, yeah. but uh, it is big business. It was recently a reportage in, in the newspaper uh, that I uh, saw on my phone uh, about that child prostitution in Norway had been three doubled the latest yeah. years. Yeah. Three doubles. Yeah. That only shows you one thing, that the yeah. police is not doing their job. No, absolutely not. And the police, no. uh, some of the, there are policemen now sentenced for pedophile too. Mm -hmm. So who can you trust? Who can you trust? Yeah. Indeed, who can yeah. you trust? It's you crazy. can soon not send your child to school or kindergarten or whatsoever before have a small worry. What absolutely. if? Okay, I think we got uh, the picture on the case so far. Uh, yeah. Now we wait for the decision in the city court and then we can come back to the case and make a new interview with you. Hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, have a nice time.